Hey y'all. So we are cooking today. Um, as you saw in the title, we are making my famous barbecue meatloaf. It's always been a hit. Everybody always love it. So we are gonna spray the pan. And first, before we even touch the meat, I like to put peppers. I was gonna cut the peppers up myself, but it was cheaper to get the pre-cut peppers because like one pepper, one bell pepper is like $3, y'all, two, $3. And for the pre-cut ones that was already in the package, it's only like two or three dollars and I get all my peppers that I want. So what we are going to do with this is actually cook it down, okay? And we are gonna season it also. Just gonna add a little more. And I know some people's like, oh, I don't like all that, you know, like the crunchy stuff on there. But the way I do it, I actually cook it down, like down, down, like almost like if you was making like a, let's say Philly cheese steak, something like that. I cook them down that far and you can put it into your meatloaf. And one thing about it, if you got kids that you know would not like to have all these vegetables, if you cook it all the way down like I do and then add it to your meatloaf, your meat, they won't even know. They're going to be like, mm, this is good, this is good, this is good. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and let this cook down. And while we're doing that, we're going to season every part of our dish okay and y'all already know i got all my seasons here so you can see them i'm doing about a pound and a half of meat it's about how can i say it it's like a pound of ground beef and a pound of ground pork. I know some people don't like pork. If you don't like pork, one thing you can do, don't get the meat that is 90% um, less fat or 90% lean, excuse me, 90% lean because more than likely it's gonna come out kinda of dry. No, nobody wanna dry meatloaf, okay? And we are going to do breadcrumbs. I forgot to buy some. But. I'm going to make some. I got some wheat bread. And I'm going to break it up. And put it into my. I don't have a food, process, food processor. But I do have a blender. Yeah I'm putting it back y'all. It's mine. Okay. It's, it's mine. Chill out. But um. I do have a blender and I have like little blender cups that go with it. I forgot the Ninja. So I'm using a little blender cup and that should be good. And I don't measure my seasoning <laughs> as y'all know. But I want to say it's probably about... I'm, I'm doing it through the shaker. So it's probably about maybe half a tablespoon. Go ahead and get this stirred up. I wish y'all could smell this. It smells so good. All right, so we are going to let this. Cook down some and then after it cooks down I'll show you what it looks like cooked down and then we are going to let this cool down that's another thing we'll let it cool down before we add it to our meat but while this is cooling I will um, go ahead and season my meat on the camera. 
And it's going to be the same seasoning. And I don't add my barbecue sauce until I'm getting the meat all prepped. So it'll, the barbecue sauce is going to be in the meat and it's going to be on top of the meat. Mm. And this is going to be another meal prep dish that I do where I'm going to freeze it and stuff. And the vegetable that we're going to have with this, I believe, is going to be Brussels sprouts. I know y'all like these Brussels vegetables in it already, y'all. This ain't enough. We're going to add some Brussels sprouts, okay? We're going to add some Brussels sprouts. Okay. See, it's getting cooked down real good. We are about to deglaze the pan, as you can see. Get some crispies down there. And I have hot water. We're going to use to deglaze it. Because we want to get all of that goodness, all that flavor. See? Deglazed. Real good. You see how far it's cooked down? You can cook it down further than this if you like. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and cook out the water. Not too much of it because I don't want the pan to get too, whatchamacallit. But here goes my breadcrumbs. This is wheat bread. That's what I had on hand. And, well, my bread pieces. And I am about to go ahead and get this blended up down to crumbs so I can put this into the oven at 300 for about 10 minutes. So they can get a little crispy. I just love my ninja, y'all. <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. But yep, I'm gonna put this on the pan inside the oven. And like I said, 300 degrees for 10 minutes. So we can go ahead and get them a little crispy. And when you put them in the oven, you wanna lay them flat on your baking sheet, okay? Let's get these crispy. All right, y'all. So while we are waiting for the oven to heat up, should have been did that. Got some paprika, I'm putting all the same seasons I put before. Chili powder. Garlic. basil i know some people like to put oregano and italian season i do have that but basil's good enough for me right now my nutritional yeast my cayenne pepper i'm starting to run out of i keep running out of ingredients huh i don't i don't never notice i need another one thing until another container of the seasoning until I like get the ready to run out but luckily I love onion powder so I got a second one of those already okay. that's that crushed red pepper like I know I like it I like it a little spicy I like it a little spicy. It's just me, so I can spice it up. If somebody else was eating it, or some kids were eating it, then I probably wouldn't make it as spicy. But the barbecue sauce that we're going to put into it, I like the brown sugar flavor of barbecue sauce. I couldn't find the brand that I usually get. It wasn't at Publix. So... I got the the sweet baby rays that a lot of people like. I mean, I like it too, but usually there's a different brand I go for. I can't think of the brand, but when I see the bottle, I know what it is. I know it's not craft either. Okay, let me go ahead and get these breadcrumbs into the oven. All right, so we got the breadcrumbs in. So we're doing about 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and crack, I'm going to crack two eggs, 
because I got a pound and a half of um, meat. Ooh, guess I can't crack eggs today, y'all. It happens sometimes. Hmm. There we go. Oh yeah, if you ever drop a, drop an eggshell, the easiest way to pick it up is with the shell. For some reason, you know, it wants to get back. That's not a good joke. I was going to say it wants to get back home, but I ain't going to say it. But I already said it, so, yeah. <laughs> and the egg is going to help bind it. The breadcrumbs are going to help bind it. Got the egg mixed in really good. All right, and check on these breadcrumbs. We're gonna get those up in there, and then we're gonna add our peppers and then our sauce. Y'all, we got our toasted breadcrumbs. We're gonna go ahead and get this into our mixture. And I know y'all, my uh. Silicone board is longer than my push car. That board is hot. I, mean, I thought it was going to be like foil. Foil don't be hot. <laughs> don't talk about me, y'all. Let me let it cool down a little bit. I'll show y'all before I dump it in. You see, it's very, it worked very well. So, like I said, blend it up. If you got a food processor, then use a food processor. I don't, I just have my wonderful ninja that I love so much. All right. And we are going to stir this in really, really good. We are going to get our peppers in. And I'm using all of our peppers. All of those juices. Cleaned out pretty good. I know if my mama see this video, she'll be proud of me. She's probably gonna be like, you could have scooped the rest of that out, but uh yeah. I scooped most of it, Ma. We are going to mix this up really, really good. And then we are going to, if you have a meatloaf pan, then you can use your meatloaf pan. I do not have a meatloaf pan. I have always sculpted my meatloaf by hand. And that is what I am going to do today. Scope it by hand. And I am going to, we had our oven at, 300 for the breadcrumbs. We're going to have it at 350 for the meatloaf. And the meatloaf is a pound and a half of meat. So we're going to cook it for about an hour. Uncovered. I'm doing uncovered. See, you don't want to mix it in real good. So everything got a bite, and like I said, if you got kids, you want to mix it in as good as you can. Use your hands, get up in there, or um, another thing you can do, you can always pay, puree the veggies down, but a little extra work, but I mean, hey, get the vegetables in, and plus the barbecue sauce glaze on it. Oh, y'all, I'm tripping, tripping. I'm supposed to put my barbecue sauce inside of it. Tripping. This is the kind I'm using today. I'm going to say I like the brown sugar kind. I couldn't find my usual brand, so I'm going to use this one. And we are doing about a half a cup. 
inside. Half a cup inside. And I want to say probably about a half on the outside, but it might be a little more. It depends. No, I'll probably be a half a cup on the outside. And usually I like to make meatloaf sandwiches, but like I said, I'm making this for my little meal prep, you know, my little meal prep. So I'm not going to eat the meatloaf sandwich. I'm just going to make this, cook it, cool it down, and put them into the meatloaf containers. Not meatloaf, but the meal prep containers. My fault, yeah. You just want to mix it good because you want all that sauce to go in there. And we didn't use that much sauce, so look at it. Looks good nice and moist that's what you want and like i said um if you don't add pork and stuff like that make sure you have your bread crumbs in there add your eggs and that will help out a whole lot all right let me get my pan and we are going to go ahead and get this shape all right y'all so we just put like a non-stick but we still going to lay down some foil or at least I'm still gonna lay out some foil. Like I said, some of y'all probably got the pan, but if I had the pan too, I still would lay down the pan. <laughs> it's just an easier cleanup. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and get this shaping. Make sure I got this in a good place. I don't feel like getting messy, messy. My mom always buy me these gloves so I can have blues. Alright. We'll just turn it out, but I'm tripping. I got gloves, right? As you can see, a pound and a half makes a lot of meatloaf, but it depends on, you know, the pan that you got, how many people you got in your family. How much you need to have. This is a pound and a half, and the breadcrumbs do stretch it. The... The peppers and the onions do stretch it also. This is my favorite type of meatloaf, y'all. This barbecue meatloaf. Growing up, I always had, like, you know, my mom made the ones with the, um, what's that, tomato sauce on top. I didn't really like the tomato sauce on top. I didn't like the, um, yeah, I didn't like tomato sauce, y'all. I didn't. Ain't no really like I did not like tomato, tomato sauce on top. I used to eat all the other parts of it and break off the top. Alright. And you want to make it as proportional as you can so it can cook evenly, okay? Alright. There goes our meatloaf. Dang, I be messing up. There goes our meatloaf. And I'm going to go ahead and get that in the oven. And like I said, we're going to cook it for 300, um, 300 degrees for an hour. I'm sorry, 350 degrees for an hour uncovered. And I'm not going to add any sauce to the top right now. I'm just going to let it cook like this. And then I will add sauce to the, cup, to the top. And then put it back in. All right. All right, y'all, the meatloaf is done. And also the Brussels sprouts. You just put the seasoning in the bag, lay it down with the vent, you know, 
splits up and it does its thing y'all it does its thing like i said cut this into six pieces tender so tender that's how I like it I don't know if y'all could tell how tender it is but it is tender fall apart tender And I did forget to spray my pan, but hopefully we'll be all right. So make sure you spray your pan, even if it's aluminum foil on it, so you can get it off easier. Whew. Got the, got the spatula, spatula. All right. I'm clumsy, but I'm hoping I can do this. And look how juicy it is. Yes. So I, don't want it anymore. I was going to cut it into like two pieces for each serving so I can feel like, you know, I'm getting a lot, you know, but I'm getting two pieces. It's good, y'all. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. This is one of the meals that my dad even likes, too. My ex boyfriend likes it, too. <laughs> we were talking. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about different things I used to cook. I forgot I used to cook the meatloaf. But he used to like my paninis, panini sandwiches the most. And my dips and stuff. And my food. It was a lot, y'all. I make a lot. I used to make a lot of different things. Add it to this one. You know, I'm ready to eat this already. So ready to eat this. Okay. And we have our Brussels sprouts here. Oh, this bag is hot. Please be careful. Like I said, don't do what I do. And with this, y'all, you can, like I said, you know, mashed potatoes, a baked potato, sweet potato. Me, I usually choose a sweet potato to go with most of my meals. Because I am a sweet type person. And that help, helps cut down my sweet tooth a little bit. Like I said, a little bit. I don't want to come out. All right, y'all, so we have six delicious servings of meatloaf and Brussels sprouts. The piece of meatloaf is about 200, 250, 260 calories. Um, Brussels sprouts is not big in calories. It's probably about 25 calories inside each thing, each plate that I made. And then 
if you eat, depending on what kind of size you add with this, you add the calories to that. So this plate right here is about 275, 285 calories. Yep. If you like the recipe, let me know down below if you try it. Hopefully you do. And bye.